Hey, welcome in everybody to the Sports Fanatic News Hockey Show. I am joined by a wonderful guest today, the wonderful E Money that the great Pirlo Wisdom uh, brought to us over here. How you doing today, E Money? I'm good, man. Just uh, living my life and uh, just hanging out here. Thank you so much for having me on here. I really appreciate that. Yep, yep, for sure, for sure. Definitely love to have you on. A very great hockey knowledge uh, guy across the, uh, I guess, across the screen here is what I have to say. Uh, <laughs> yeah, across but, the screen. Uh, yeah, we're going to be doing your midseason awards. Is I think a good one to start off with, um, just because sometimes it's a little bit harder to debate uh, would be, and I'll turn it over to you first. We'll see if we have the same cat here. Who do you think will get the Selkie uh, if you were doing your midseason awards this year? Just because I don't think that one's as straightforward, but as we'll start with a conversation piece to kick us off. Yeah, I think that's a good one to start off with. That one to me is the hardest one to do because it's hard to like really have the eye test for it because during the regular season, I'll mostly just watch caps and like peep at a couple other games here and there because I just have so I only have so much time. And then obviously playoffs, I just go nuts and watch a boatload of the games between different teams. Uh, so that one really, I feel like with the Selkie, I guess you have to look at like the more like advanced stats because that's really the award for the player that is on offense that has the best two-way game. So um, there's a couple guys that you could have in there. I said Patrice Bergeron. I know that awards also, like, I guess kind of criticized as a reputation award, and Bergeron's absolutely amazing defensively. He definitely has the 200-foot game, no questions asked, where he contributes on offense very well, and his defense is good. His back checking is absolutely incredible. Uh, right now he's winning 62.5% face-offs. I, I love face-offs. Like, if you can win some face-offs, I want you on my team just so it just determines puck possession and um, you just have more control of the puck. Also, too, he's got 18 block shots, 14 takeaways, and then uh, his Corsi is a 60.2 and plus minus seven as well. So I, I think that would be my guy at the moment. I'm sure there's other guys that um, could possibly win it, but at the moment, that would be my pick. Yeah, um, a guy that I always um, just liked, especially because if you can win the Selkie as a non-center, uh, that's when you know you're doing it right, is Mark Stone. And I feel like he still is doing it pretty good this year. His course C4 is a, a 55.4, which is actually above his career average. And his uh, ozone uh, per o OZS percentage is also three above his career average at a 55.9 compared to a 52.7. Um, and then people that still uh, like the plus minus stat, when it is as high as a plus 18, that's when you know you're – uh, with the right line mates. Um, he seems to be doing it right again. He's always come right there, obviously, in other years for the Selkie. I think he's a guy that should get it and um, definitely would deserve it if he does. Because um, if you can win it as a winger, you even deserve it more. But he came in fifth in 2019-20, second and second in 18-19. Uh, compared to uh, the season prior, he also came in uh, 22nd earlier in his career in Ottawa. So this guy's just got better on defense. I feel like he's one of those guys they have to give it to at a certain point. Like, he deserves yeah. the award. It's one of those things. Like how they finally gave the Norris to Yossi. Like, you kind of eventually have to just give at least one Selkie to yeah, Mark Stone. I and, I feel, and I feel like the best year to do it is the year that his numbers are above his career highs because nobody's going to – he deserves it and nobody's going to be able to debate it as much when his numbers are above his career highs. Well, two things I'd have to say with that. Um, one is I, I don't think it's really much of a question that he's the best defensive winger in all of hockey. Um, his defense is absolutely excellent. The way he, like, takes the puck from people, it's amazing. The only problem with a winger winning it is that they don't really take as many face-offs. That's what might hurt him. Yeah, too. that cancels it out. Yeah, you're right. That hurts. That's why you yeah. always see the Kopitars of the world where yeah. um, a guy that honestly is better on defense than people think uh, when you look at his numbers, um, especially just it could be just because of flat out how good he is at offense, but I think he kind of gets the Crosby treatment is Dre. Because Dre is actually, like, McDavid doesn't always get in defensive position. Dreisaitl normally is. That's why 
I've always heard comparisons of Kopitar when you hear some people with Dre, because he kind of mm-hmm. is more who try to get back and get positioned defensively. McDavid's good defensively more because they're catch up to the person. It's not because they're always be in the right spot. So it's a little bit different. I, f- I don't think he'll win a Selkie this year, but I wouldn't be no. surprised if people start talking about him like Crosby where the, in the future where it's like everyone, I understand his offense is great, but you also have to realize he's also pretty damn good on the other end of the puck as well. And I feel like Dreisaitl's kind of this era's version of that. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I was looking at Dreisaitl's numbers too, and uh, his face-off numbers are good too. Uh, maybe eventually down the road he'll, he'll win one. Yeah, um, so we have – you had um, Patrice Bergeron, who we think the award some people think might be called the Bergie by the time all is uh, said and done. Uh, yeah, by the time he retires rather than the Selkie. And I had Mark Stone because I just think as a forward, he eventually – he's been in second already, fifth place, 22nd. I think he's been working his way up, and he's going to deserve it. This is the year you can give it to him because it's above career average. But Bergeron you can never argue with. Um, that's why I didn't have any rebuke to that because Patrice Bergeron every year, it's like LeBron James with the MVP in basketball. If you want to give it to him, you could give it to him. You could give Patrice the Selkie every year. But I think a good one to move into now that's always a fun debate is the Jack Adams, um, who we think the coach of the year would be because there's quite a few surprise teams this year mixed in with the top contenders. So I'll turn it over to you first. Is your coach of the year in one of those top contenders? Or is it with one of those surprise teams that has been overperforming? Who's your coach of the year at midseason? Well, my coach of the year at the midseason would be on a surprise team. And it's also, in my opinion, a top contender as well. I think we need to talk about this team as being a contender. And I actually uh, went into more detail with my surprise teams in my podcast. And for those that aren't familiar with that, it's called On the Money. It's on Anchor. You can find it on Spotify and a bunch of other um things like that too so i have coach q as my coach of the year right now um currently he's 27 and 4 and 44 points second in the central a little bit behind the lightning but this team to me is a legitimate cup contender um coach q has a resume that's very very good definitely a hall of fame coach three cups part of a dynasty of the blackhawks in the 2010s and the panthers really weren't expected to be this good right now i think even standings wise they're definitely top 10 at the moment their offense is great uh their goaltending is relatively good and that's the thing too that's scary about this team is that bob rowski isn't as good as what he was in columbus if they can get the columbus version of bob rowski on this team they're going to be very, very hard to be. And yeah, I they would be nasty then. They would be disgusting. They would go on a far run. Like they would just take. They would just go very far. And then Barkov to me is one of the most underrated players in the league. Huber done. There's a, a couple other good guys on that team, but Coach Q to me would get Coach of the Year because before the season started, I don't think I knew many people that had this team going to the playoffs. I didn't have them as a playoff team this year. And especially considering you have to do the top four teams of each division. So to me, I was like, eh, they're not going to be a playoff team this year. But now it's like, okay, they might be cup contenders now with how good they've been. Yeah, I think uh, Coach Q is uh, definitely a great uh, pick. I think he's definitely the favorite now. Um, The second guy I would have on my list of favorites as a surprise team, uh, just because I like always – giving us different people in these rather than just agreeing. It always makes for a better uh, thing um, would be Everson. Cause I want to give him credit for what Dean Everson coming in and right away, making that impact in Minnesota, obviously Kirill, the thrill has a uh, huge impact on that big impact by Dean Everson, but uh, they've really been doing good there. Uh, Spurgeon's contract this year actually looks a little bit more, Okay, uh, Sutter's older but still playing well. It's just you have the, that old contract before they change the rules that he's still attached to. Uh, you have Brodeen for a bunch of years. Pretty much their defense is locked up. And uh, he's gotten the most you've seen. He's turned Car- Carson Soucy, I think, has looked the best since Everson's come in. And for 275, only at 26, uh, seems to be a guy that could be a good steal. Um, whoever's been put in, like the Deco Sterns of the world, he's got the most out of Eric Sinek, who actually looks like a first-line center now. I feel like he's showing 
that he can get the most out of guys. Victor Rask is by no stretch of the imagination a second line center. But with Dean Everson's system, when he moves him up there, he just know, or even on the first line at times, he put him with Kirill because of their chemistry. He just knows how to put his guys in the right spots, it seemed. Where I, when I was watching the Wilds TV crew last week, they were talking about how impressed they've been with Rask. He doesn't do anything special. He just does the small things right, and Everson puts him in the right spots, where Eck is the guy that will develop into the scorer, along with obviously Rossi as time goes on. That he just seems good with the young guys, where some of the older guys, I think the team's going to have to find ways to move on from. But for this particular season, I think he's got the most out of his group. And I honestly would not have projected them to be in third place right now. Um, it coming into this season at this point of the season, tied with the St. Louis Blues in points. But if I had to peg what team's playing better, that would be Minnesota. Their defensive and offensive efficiency is better than the Blues. They're a plus 12 in differential. The Blues are still a negative. So I think uh, Minnesota, I'll give it to Dean Everson to give him some praise. I think they deserve some praise for being such a big college hockey town and a big hockey supplier. We don't talk about the Wild enough when it comes to the NHL. So I'll give some praise over to the Minnesota Wild, which then Frederick, who I do the OTH podcast with, is probably going to love me for that. So. <laughs> cool. Yeah, I'm making some friends. <laughs> yeah. Um, now I think the next uh, best one to move on to, we're not, we're only going to do the heart just for people to know is the Ted Lindsay and heart seems to be kind of interchangeable. The Ted Lindsay is the players association voted on or the hearts, of course, by the writers group. Um, I think a good one to go into now is our Calder, uh, which is obviously the rookie of the year for people that do not know the Calder Memorial Trophy. Last year, it was Cal McCarr. Um, which I could give you last year's. I forgot to do that. I apologize. Last year's Selkie winner, uh, for people I don't know, was Sean Couturier of the Flyers. And last year's Coach of the Year, Jack Adams winner, was Bruce Cassidy of the Bruins. I meant to give last year's winner as well. I'm going over. As we move on to the Calder, though, um, who do you think is the leader in the Calder Trophy right now? And if, if you think someone's the leader, do you think it's still close? Um, I think it's relatively close. And I'm sure there has to be at least a few of these awards that we can agree on at some point. And um, so anyways, so I think uh, Kirill uh, Kaprizov is the guy. It's kind of hard not to give it to him. 25 points, uh, 10 goals, 15 assists. And I feel like he's like one of the very few reasons why this wild team has become relatively interesting to watch. Because I feel like in a couple of years past, they were, to me, like, relatively boring to watch and like they were also Agreed. kind of stuck in the mud where it was like they were too good of a team to rebuild but they were too bad of a team to go anywhere in the playoffs i feel like they would just lose in the first round or maybe just miss the playoffs and then that's just that like to me there just wasn't a whole lot exciting about that team and it's kind of weird because they're in the state of hockey but kaprizov yep. to me that's right now i think he's the clear um call her favorite at the moment yeah, that's one. Um, I think we, uh, I, I can bring up how much I love my man uh, Kevin Lankinen out there in Chicago. But with how well Kirill's playing, uh, he has twenty five points. Um, has done more as a small kid at only five ten, one ninety two. I think in the defensive zone along the boards play. And in a physical stature that I think I would have expected him to do when he came in at that size too, coming over from overseas. So in whatever in the facets we thought he would impress at, which is obviously offensive firepower, kind of being that guy that has the great finesse moves, but can also just bulldoze speed wise through the zone like a new age Marion Gabrick out there again in Minnesota. Um, to make Minnesota fans holly and jolly in their uh, bellies as you talk about Caprisov. Um, we got to give a shout out to the wild organization for Kaprizov too, because they scouted this kid, picked him out of the fifth round playing overseas in the KHL. And now look what he's become a uh, rookie of the, the favor for the rookie of the year. So they deserve a lot of praise for uh, their scouting department as well, being able to pick Kirill the thrill. And I would say who's in second place right now, just so I mentioned him real quick, I would say um, the Blackhawks deserve a lot of praise since um, Kevin Lankinen came from undrafted to all of a sudden probably being the guy that I would say at the current moment is second. 
I would agree with if that. you're voting on yeah voting on rookie of the year yeah. so those teams deserve a lot of praise for the two rookie of the years one being a fifth round pick in Kirill the Thrill the other being an undrafted kid that played in the yeah. Liga in Finland and now has really come into their own and really have established themselves in at least the rookie seasons so congratulations to them but I definitely agree with you I think that one has to be uh Kirill the thrill, that's for sure, where, like I said, last year it was Cal McCarr, and I don't think there was a contest as much other than with Hughes maybe uh, last year when it came to McCarr uh, winning that award. Um, With this one, um, I think now uh, we can go to – we'll save the heart for last. We'll go to the Norris since I think the Vezina is a – little bit of a fun I love talking about goalies uh lead the the goal is back. very very hard yeah, it's that's super, fun. in my opinion it's super freaking close for Vezina yeah um, so, so we went to the Norris first if you want to do that and then we're saved the Vezina for second to last and the yeah. most valuable player for last uh who would be your Norris trophy potential top defenseman right now of course last year's winner was Roman Yossi for those that do not know yeah so for Norris I feel like a lot of times they kind of tend to give it to like the best defensive player that contributes to offense. But to me, it should just be the Probably, best, yeah. like the straight up, the best defensive player. Like this guy is very good in all areas where, whether it's the O zone, neutral zone, D zone, blah, 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 everything. Um, so to me, and I think you have to look at the numbers a good amount too, for that as well. Uh, to me, it'd be Victor Hedman. It's kind of hard to pick against him because in my opinion, he's the best defensive player in all of hockey. Um, I mean, his playoff run last year, and it has nothing to do with the Norris this year, but his playoff run last year was filthy. He was just so nasty. Um, very good in all situations. He can quarterback a, pl- a power play. He can be responsible in his own zone. He's good in the neutral zone. I mean, right now he's at six goals, 26 assists, 32 points. His average time on ice is 25 minutes and 31 seconds, uh, played 31 games, 52.2% Corsi and a plus minus 15. It just seems like this guy just doesn't really make uh, too many mistakes. So to me, that would be my favorite for the Norris. And uh, I got to say, Jeff Petrie has been a big surprise too. He'd probably be my runner up. I wasn't expecting him to be anywhere remotely close to the Norris this year. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, I would agree. Victor Hedman's always far and beyond um, been one of the best defensemen, of course, um, in the NHL. I mean, hell, when he's playing in a bummed leg, uh, he still looked like one of the best defensemen on the damn ice. Uh, that's when you know. That's when you know you're a very good defenseman when you're playing on a bummed leg, and still look like one of the best out there. Um, for me, he won it in seventeen eighteen, so I feel like. You don't have the push incentive to say we have to get him one. I feel like your runner-up candidate, that's why he's in first for me, because he's well above his career high. Uh, his Corsi 4 career high is a 51.7. He's at a 57.3 this year. His OZS percentage is at a 40, or excuse me, his career is at a 48.1. He's at a 52 this year. So all of his numbers you would want to see, and then his offensive numbers, plus plus 14, 27 points, 16 assists, 11 goals. Uh, they're all where you want to see them. Uh, he's been a guy that's become that almost what Muzzin became to Toronto. But as soon as he came into Montreal, as the guys were coming up, he would nurture anybody that came in, make them their best self while performing to his highest level, which it seemed like he's very comfortable there and really cruising in a system now led by Descharme, which is kind of, push through your defense first to lead to offense is what they're trying to do now. So I think he's in a perfect place for me. He's in first place because I think these awards sometimes go by. We need to get this. Look how good this guy's doing. He doesn't have one. This might be the only opportunity we have to give it to him. Similar to what Giordano went off and won. They knew that wouldn't happen again. Yeah. They knew that wouldn't happen again. So you kind of want to give it to him when he earned it. I think you can, argue the same case for Petrie with this one. That's pretty fair. But uh, that's who I have for that. I've always also just been a big fan of him and thought Jeff Petrie's been, like you brought up, one of the most underrated uh, defensemen time and time again uh, in the NHL and doesn't get the credit he deserved. 
But second to last, uh, we'll move into the Vezina Trophy, which, as E Money said, is probably the most debatable, the most hardest to pick. But who have you pegged for there so far? Uh, there's definitely some options. The Vasilevskis, the Hellbucks of the world, to name a few. Uh, the Flurries, how he's performing this year. But uh, who have you pegged as far as your midseason Vezina? So to me, I think it comes down to three guys. And I was thinking about it for a little while today. Um, there's Grubauer, there's Flurry, and then there's Vasilevsky. Um, all three of those pretty much possess almost the same exact numbers. Like you're kind of just splitting hairs between a couple things. But at the end of the day, like I have to go Vasilevsky. I think overall he's probably the best goaltender in all of hockey, probably the most flexible too. It's unbelievable some of the flexible stuff he can do. His sin reach is probably like a 30, is with mine's like a three. Uh, so I'm like, how did he do that? Uh, really amazing. So anyways, yeah, his numbers are nasty too. 24 games played, um, going 23 and one right now. GAA is a 1.86, three shutouts right now. Save percentage is a 9.33, zero really bad starts, which I thought was like a very good stat. Um, I mean, Grubauer's had three of them and Mark andre Fleury's had two of them. And then, uh, Vassie's GSAA is a 17.3. And also, too, he faces more shots per game with 28.08 than Flurry and Grubauer did. But some people could also penalize Vasilevsky and be like, oh, the, his team is disgusting, like blah, blah, blah. Like they're the champs. But I would say that's a big, safe. big Grubauer reason why they're that good. Uh, he would be my best in the pick. Yeah. I would say I actually agree with you on this one, too. I think Vazzy, uh has earned. Uh, if there's other guys, I think Grubauer deserves to be praised because when healthy, he has been a pretty good. Like his career numbers are a two three four and a nine two one. So you know the guy when healthy, he's been there for his teams. It's just been health. So I think he deserves, like you said, the praise given. But the big stat I had written down too is like it's almost like quality starts in baseball. How many non quality did you have when you're looking at the Cy Young? Uh, Vazzy's had no non quality right now, like you pointed out. That's what I think separates it, and you brought up that valid point, so I don't really have much more to say on that other than uh, I just agree with you. I think Vasilevsky has continued to be – it's amazing to think the dude's only 26, too. I feel like he's been in the league a little bit longer than yeah, that. But, uh, yeah, but I, when you talk about his flexibility before we uh, move on now um, to – our last award, which will be the Hart Trophy. I never thought when I saw Bob come up and see his flexibility, I would see someone else where I'm like, wow, they're more flexible. Where that, that, that was, that's Vasilevsky. Like, he's literally, you saw Bob making saves, you're like, how did he not tear his groin in half making <laughs> that save? Where Vasilevsky's even more so that, where he'll be on this side of the net, almost out of the net, and then jump all the way back. Sorry, it's a phone call coming in. Jump all the way back and make the save. It's just absolutely ridiculous. So, yeah, I think he's deserving of it. If I had to order it, I would actually go Vazzy, Gruby, Flurry, just because Flurry's obviously been in the upper elk. I think Ruby deserves his praise. So if I was voting and he didn't doesn't get injured and knock on wood stays healthy, I think he would deserve to come in a second place as of right now if the stats kind of stay the same. But um, as we move into our last one here, I obviously uh, – Thank E Money for joining for this video. It's been a pleasure to have him on the Sports Fanatic uh, News Hockey Show talking about the midseason awards. We're moving to one that's normally not too hard to peg because you just kind of look at who's doing great points wise and production wise overall. Um, for you, yeah, for you, who is your heart trophy? I believe it's going to be one of two people on the same exact roster. But uh, which one have you picked <laughs> uh, for the uh, heart trophy? So. I think the heart, realistically, I mean, I'll give my second place guy after, but it's very, very hard not to give it to McDavid. He's the best player in the league, uh, definitely on offense. His faceoff numbers are getting better, too. He's at a 51.3 right now, which is – it just makes him more dangerous. But also, too, he has the most points. So he has the Art Ross right now, 60 points. I think in a full season they said something like he's around like a – 130 point pace if it was a full season which that's just ridiculously insane um tied with matthews for goals with 21 each and if i had to do a rocket because i think sharing awards is stupid i think mcdavid should get the rocket over matthews right now because mcdavid has one more even strength goal 
than Matthews 14 verses 13. Uh, so McDavid ties for goals, ties or clearly has the lead in points. I think the second place person is like 10 behind him with dry sidle. Right. Yeah. It's yeah. Dry. Yeah. So McDavid's just like going far and beyond everybody else. And like, just the disgusting stuff he does pretty much every game, like the pass between his leg and his and the defender's leg behind it. I'm like, I don't know how he did that. Um, I mean, he can do whatever he wants, score goals, make passes, skate very, very well. He's the he's basically the flash on skates. Like when you see him go on a breakaway, it's an automatic goal. The goalie is like, well, like there's nothing I can do about it. I don't care what goalie it is. Uh, so, yeah, McDavid just pretty much has it all. Like this year – it's very possible he gets the heart, the Lindsay, the Art Ross, and the Rocket. Like it's possible he can get four yep. awards this year. I don't think he'll get a cup or a Con Smythe because I don't think his team's good enough to get him there. I mean, maybe they can go on a run because of him and Dry Subtle and like a few other key guys in there. And then my second place for the heart would probably be Patty Kane. You got the you have to throw him in the conversation. He's carrying the Blackhawks. I mean, they have good players. Don't get me wrong, but. I mean, Taze hasn't played all this year. Doc hasn't played all this year. And I think Patty Kane's really elevating that team. Um, he, he's a disgusting player. But I have to go McDavid with how good he's been. He's just separating himself from the pack. And, like, he's just on some next-level stuff right now. Yeah, McDavid's a guy um, that just enters the zone. Um, I know when I talked about it with people in the past, it's like – um, two guys named Pavel, which I don't mean to do when I compare him to how quick he can enter the zone. Uh, but one is Pavel Burry, who would just never slow down. He would start here and be going 110 miles per hour over here. The same was the case with Dasu. Now it's the case with McDavid. But all three of them could just keep going at their highest skate speed and still deke around every defender and deke around the goalie, which is not like... Gretzky could do that, but even not always to the same degree that those three could just go at their full speed and continue to just make the same moves they would make at just regular speed. So, yeah, it's absolutely ridiculous. I think uh, he earns it, and I think you're right. I think Kane will come in second just because when two guys go off on a team, sometimes that'll cancel each other out and make one come in third or fourth rather than second place because they don't want to, like, pump up the one team too much, especially if Edmonton does what they continue to do and not fully get to the where they're supposed to get to the promised land. That's when you usually see the voting uh, come to fruition a bit. But I think Kane will come in second. Like you said, Dre will get canceled out a bit by McDavid. That will probably put him in third or fourth, probably yeah. third. Yeah, then, probably third. Uh, He's been yeah. an incredible tale. Yeah, because Barkov is another guy that could, yeah, work his way in there. You're absolutely right. But I think this is the easiest one, the runaway uh, one with Connor McDavid at this point, unless if he goes cold and Drake picks or, up a lot. But I don't see that happening. Or if Matthews kind of starts to come back, because I felt like for a little bit there, Matthews was the favorite. And then he kind of fizz He's, I mean, he still had a great year, but he's been fizzling a little bit lately because he's had that wrist injury. But at one point, I think he had like 18 goals in 18 games. And then for the past couple of games, it's either he's been out or he's been kind of cold off. But I could see him making a bit of a comeback. I mean, he's one hell of a hockey player, too. So I don't want to count him out either. But yeah, this is McDavid's award right now. Yeah, I agree, and that uh, wraps up our Sports Fan News Hockey Show for the Midseason Awards. I really enjoy doing this with you, E Money. I hope I can have you on some other time. It was really fun uh, going over the Midseason Awards with you. Um, a great time to come on would actually be not next, because I hope to have you on again before this time frame, but when we're done to see how right we are. Let's see. Well, after the awards actually come out, we can talk about uh, who we think um, is – is actually we thought was going to win and how we thought the person that actually did win or if we were right, why we thought we were right. So that will be an interesting thing to do. But do you have anything you want to share um, with anybody for like any Twitter accounts or any podcast like you shared earlier so people can follow you and I'll link up with you over there? Oh, I just want to say thanks for um, having me on here. I appreciate that a lot. And I'm active on a couple other uh, hockey Facebook groups. Um, the face off circle pearls of wisdom. I love hockey. I'm kind of on there a decent amount. Um, I mean, I try to veer away from Facebook because of how poison it is.
time. I'll talk hockey. I'll talk pro football, which I'll get into um, the draft prospects soon. And then I talk some UFC as well. So on the money, look that up on Anchor, Spotify, whatever. So oh, and Apple too. So yep, that's it. It's been fun. Yeah, though, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Uh, but uh, you can follow me um, at follow the Sports Fact News page. Trying to hit one twenty five by weeks end at one twenty one. Now we appreciate your support, everybody. We thank you for joining the mid season awards show. Uh, enjoy all the great hockey action this week, and as always, stay safe and stay healthy out there. Peace out, everybody.